Hey everybody, this is thunder in the evening. There's thunder in the morning, and there's thunder in the evening, and there's thunder at supper time. Just kidding. Uh, thought I'd talk about some something I was talking to a friend about today. And get off the subject of the world bullshit and get back down to the nitty gritty of uh, living like we should. And I was talking to a friend about how, you know, I teach meditation techniques and I teach uh, tracking techniques and I teach spiritual techniques, cosmic breathing, all that stuff. And if you check my videos, maybe two or three back, you'll start finding those. But I was talking to a friend today about uh, how we, we get into spiritual practices and we set a, a certain time aside and we go real intense at it and then we uh, continue on and then that, that time comes up again, maybe a time a day or a day of the week uh, at a certain time or and we get into it or a certain time every day for 30 minutes or half an hour or an hour or, uh, and we go at it and it becomes a discipline a discipline and discipline is good but a lot of times uh, when you get into that mindset of I gotta discipline myself to do this man or I gotta do this now or I gotta do it this way and I gotta devote it now and then you start beating yourself up for not doing something if you miss it or that type of thing. That's counterproductive to what meditation's all about. And so the object of meditation really, when you think about it, is, or any spiritual practice, is to incorporate that into your life all the time. In other words, living your life that way. So, if you have uh, a certain time set aside, sometimes you almost dread it. Oh my God, I got to meditate today. Uh, <laughs> that's not the way it's supposed to be, people. And so, on anything that I do, if I do meditation or if I do inner alchemy or if I do tantric uh, practices, Oh, in inner alchemy, yoga, uh, straight out meditation, maybe some Tai Chi, uh, whatever I do, maybe some Qi Gong or Qi Gong, uh, breathing exercises. I'm to the point now where, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and do like 30 minutes straight or an hour, but uh, if you really want to progress, I'd suggest uh, stopping for one minute or two minutes and doing a little bit of that routine that you do when you sit down for 30 minutes or when you sit down for a half an hour do it throughout the whole day that way it doesn't become oh my god I gotta go meditate it becomes a fun thing it becomes a thing like I think I'm just gonna stop for a minute and I'm gonna do this Tai Chi motion uh, roll back or sparrow grabs a tail or I'm gonna go into a uh, stance and breathe a little for about oh maybe a minute minute and a half or I'm gonna go into splatter vision and I'm gonna experience that for a while but you do it spur of the moment and you just stop like if you're walking around the house you stop in a special place that you like this may be letting in the sunlight or maybe you just step outdoors for a few minutes and you do it for a minute or a half a minute uh, two minutes F do what feels good for you uh, sometimes you, you, you say you're going to do something for a minute or two and it feels so good, well, you end up doing it for five or ten. That's the way 
that you should approach life and uh, meditation because life is supposed to be a meditation. Life is supposed to be a Tai Chi moving in a certain way. Life is supposed to be balanced. Life is supposed to be uh, a continual higher consciousness uh, approach. And life is not supposed to be stressful. And if you're stressing yourself out by thinking about uh, you're not disciplining yourself enough or you, you, you missed your time for meditation, all that stuff goes right out the window when you know that you do it all day long for like a minute here or a minute there. And if you feel like going into it deeper, will you go into it deeper? Now take for instance, uh, I teach uh, splatter vision, which is seeing out of the uh, corners of your eyes in a peripheral manner where you can see uh, 360 degrees and there's a certain technique to that and you have to practice it. It's in one of my videos. And uh, you, have to, you have to widen your angle and do all that focus, all the stuff I talk about. And sometimes you'll uh, go outside, like I'll go outside, and I'll just start, I'll be walking to the mailbox uh, out here in the desert, out front or something, and uh, I'll go into splatter vision then when I'm, when I'm outside and uh, I'm walking from uh, my abode to out to where the uh, mailbox is. I'll go into tracker vision, I'll go into that splatter vision so I can see everything and take everything into effect. I might not have been doing it all day. I do it in the desert here because I can uh, sense movement everywhere and that's important when there's snakes crawling about. Uh, <clears throat> so I go into tracker vision. Or I might be sitting out on the back deck of my uh, trailer here and just looking at the mountains and go into a certain breathing mode. Abdominal breathing with the spine erect and the feet flat on the floor. I might be sitting or standing. And I might just do it for like uh, a minute or two. But see, that what that does is it makes you feel like you're in that meditation mode all the time and, and when you do get into the longer periods of meditation uh, when you go into the shorter ones it immediately puts you in that mindset because you've been there for like 30 minutes at a time say I'm not saying to give up the 30 minute at a time or the, the hour at a time marathon meditation or whatever I'm not saying to give that up, that's important too. But when you intersperse this uh, walking meditation, just stopping now and then, you don't have to do a 30 minute meditation every day or an hour meditation. You can do, a, like I'm saying here, just walking around, stopping for a few minutes, uh, breathing as you know you should, which I've taught in all my past videos going into a certain stance, going into a posture, and what that does is it puts you in a mindset. And it puts you in it in, in, to where you're actually shape-shifting into that mindset. And if you get to a higher conscious level, uh, one time in a long meditation, then you can go there every time that you stop short. It's like an anchor, okay? It's like an uh, in, in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, uh, they have anchors, where you, and that's an anchor. It, when you go into a certain state of mind, you, you anchor back into that long meditation that you did earlier. So life should be a meditation. And when you're in the martial arts, you don't just not think about the martial arts uh, when you're walking around the street or something. You, you, you're constantly in that mindset. In fact, you can be running 
You can re be running moves. You can be running uh, 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 forms. You can be running uh, certain uh, actions in your mind. I go from the complete hard to the complete soft in the martial arts, and sometimes I'll move like a snake, and other times I'll move more rigid, like a hammer. And sometimes I'll turn a certain way, and all the time you're doing this, all the practices that I do have, th have to do with energy, energy, and feeling energy, and taking energy in, and sending energy out to the universe. So when you do these things, you can uh, be a complete meditator, a whole meditator, a, a, a wide-angle meditator, a, a, a person that uh, is actually putting into practice in, in everyday life and everyday movements. I tell people a lot of times if you're standing in line at a bank or if you're, you can breathe, you can change your vision, you can uh, see what kind of feelings you're feeling, uh, proximity sense, uh, martial arts stuff, or you can go into a deep breathing uh, thing, start moving your energy around that way. And when you're walking, you can walk with splatter vision, or you can walk just regular, or you can switch it back and forth. This makes life interesting, people. Makes life interesting. And it pulls you out of your robotic mentality that you're in uh, every day, that all of us are in. This hypnotic mentality, like when we go to the store, we get in the car, we throw it in first, or, you know turn on the radio, uh, blast away down the freeway. No, that's not how you live life, people. You live it with all your senses, and that's another practice that you can uh, get into, is being uh, in presence, which is another thing I teach. And you can shapeshift. You can become a robot for a while and wa walk around mechanically. And then all of a sudden you realize, no, I think I just want to stop for a minute and take a breath. Or I want to see things out that window in a different light than just uh, like, uh, oh, that's the mountain outside the window. You might want to get into the colors of the mountain. You might want to get in into the texture. You might Just for a minute. A minute, people. Is that hard to do? No. And then you'll find out that you're really starting to enjoy the uh, meditative techniques that you learned and the, uh, the breathing that you learned and the feelings that you're acquiring through uh, advanced practice. This is super advanced practice. People, again, the object of meditation is to be in that space all the time. So if you give yourself little shots of it all day long, then you're not going to feel like you're, uh, it's not going to feel so much like discipline. Although that takes discipline too on a, in, in a different sense. Sure, it takes discipline to stop and go, yeah, you know, I think I'll breathe here for a few minutes or I think I'll put my feet 18 inches apart and my spine erect and uh, throw back my shoulders and relax and do some abdominal breathing. Oh, just for a minute or two. Or maybe I'll do some Kung Fu San Su and I'll go through a few forms uh, like I'm annihilating somebody or whatever in case somebody comes up to me on the street. Or maybe I'll do some flowing Tai Chi to limber up myself and ground myself. Or maybe I'll sit down in a lotus position on the uh, rug, uh, my throw rug here for a few minutes and... Uh, get into some Kriya, or maybe I'll uh, get down on the carpet there and uh, do some yoga poses, two or three for a second or two, or maybe I'll stretch out now, or maybe I'll walk over to this side. You see what I'm saying here? This gives you a consciousness of that uh, all every time, every day, every minute of the day, you're you have the ability to improve your uh, well-being.
So I don't know, I was just thinking about these things today. And then this video is going to be kind of short. And I've been talking about all the bullshit that's going on in the world. So I thought I'd give people a little, little bit more uh, taste of uh, what they should be doing. You know, with this also uh, uh, in my book, Thunder in the Wind, which is a novel, second half of Emergence, I discuss ascension and descension. I discuss uh, ascending and descending. And let's say you have a, a this, this applies to exactly what I'm talking about here. I'll just add a little bit of this, although I might get more in more depth on it later. But uh, ascending means that you're, you're raising your frequency up and you're going to a higher level of consciousness. And when you get into a situation where you're feeling pain and anguish or emotional pain or uh, you're having a hard time or you just talk to a bill collector on the phone, you're pissed off or uh, somebody's intruding on your space or... Uh, some bad thoughts are coming your way. You can ascend beyond the physical, okay, and uh, transcend that, whatever's going on at that time for you. Transcend it, ascend above it, fly above the clouds, baby. And in order to do that, which I'll get into more in depth uh, on later. In order to do that, you the, doing what I'm talking about here, stopping for a few minutes and being in presence and breathing and doing all these kinds of things, spiritual practices by the minute, <laughs> not at set times during the day. Uh, you, you find that you're able to transcend or ascend easier when you get into a situation that's uh, pissing you off or something, making you angry. Or making you sad, or bringing up some other kind of emotion. This gives you more control over your emotions, too. Gives you more control over your breathing, gives you more control over your thoughts. Puts you as the master of your destiny, the master of your life, the master of the road that you're walking. Um... So you might call this an all 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 day meditation. You might call it an all day spiritual practice, all day meditation. Or meditation as life. Life as meditation. <laughs> and spiritual practices. You'll find the indi that the indigenous people of this land kind of live that way. Because they were always in tune. I call this being in tune. Tuning up periodically during the day. One minute out of an hour? Wow, that's a big deal, isn't it? What if you did it one minute out of every hour? How many hours are in a day? You did eight minutes of meditation, or you did 12 minutes, or if you did it uh, five minutes every other hour? Uh... You'd have 20 minutes, right, in an eight-hour day? So, uh, that's something to keep in mind, people. And I do teach advanced techniques in meditation, but uh, this, is, this seems real simple, but this is advanced. Because it's a way of thinking. It's a way of walking the red road. It's a way of, of uh, walking the path. It's a way of... Uh, anchoring yourself into your spiritual practices and out of the robotic mentality that you uh, find yourself so easily slipping into on a day-to-day -day basis. Sound good? All right, I'll leave it there. Uh, I'm out of here. This is thunder in the evening. Sometimes it's thunder in the morning. Oh, I said that already, didn't I? Okay, I'm out of here. Adios.